Hi, Marjan. Welcome to 11 Questions. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I want to start by asking you, where are you from and where do you live? I'm originally from Iran and I live in the Boston area. And how many languages can you speak? Uh, I speak two well and two not so well. So I speak English and Persian uh, fluently and then um, French and German. I used to be fluent and now it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best way to start your day for you? Definitely with coffee and ideally by reading and not looking at the news right away. Ideally, ideally by writing. <laughs> reading and writing first thing would be the best. Yeah, that sounds like a great day. Yeah. And if you were to get to go on a vacation right now, I know it's like a dream situation during COVID. Where would you go? You know, I would actually go to New York, which is where I grew up only because I desperately want to see my family there. So that to me would be my ideal vacation spot because then I could see my parents. We're also isolated from people that matter to us, right? Yeah. Since you mentioned visiting your family, what's your favorite food or your mm -hmm. comfort food? My favorite food, it's actually a Persian dish. It's called Orme Sabzi and it's like a stew made with a lot of green herbs and vegetables and red kidney beans and usually lamb or beef um, and it's served over rice. I feel like there's probably a similar Indian name of something I feel. One of the secret ingredients in it is actually fenugreek and fenugreek you know a little goes a long way and I know that Persian and Indian cuisines share fenugreek in some of their dishes yeah I do use that in some recipes mm, yeah yeah thinking back on your books and your life in general what's one thing that you are most proud of wow honestly I'm most proud of not giving up because I could have given up many 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 times um, when things didn't look good and my career has had a really sort of zigzaggy route as a lot of careers I think do have, especially for women, um, especially when you're balancing a family. And so I'm really proud that I actually wrote and published two books so far. I think sometimes I still can't believe it, to be honest with you. I just can't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> and how old were you when you realized that you want to be a writer? I think ever since I was a child, I wrote. Ever since I learned how to write, I wrote, but it didn't occur to me that it could be something I could be until I was a teenager, probably in high school, when I had a creative writing class and the teacher kept encouraging me. And that was the first time I began to think maybe this is something I could do as a vocation. Oh, that's great. I love that you had a teacher like that who encouraged you. Oh, yeah. So many teachers who encouraged me. Honestly, I think they've played a pivotal role in my sense of myself as a writer. And other than writing, what do you enjoy the most? You know, I love to cook. So I do a lot of cooking. And anyone who's read my books knows that there's a lot of food in both the books. And I, I kind of love all cuisines, but obviously I do a lot of Persian cooking. I also, since the pandemic, have become a walker. You know, I think it's my one kind of form of entertainment. <laughs> so, um, I do a lot of walking now. And of course, reading. That's the first love. And speaking of difficult times, which we are living in right now, what's mm -hmm. the most heartwarming thing that you have experienced recently? I get a lot of messages and emails that people uh, send me. Also, I get tagged in a lot of reviews on Instagram. One of the most heartwarming is when somebody tells me that reading the stationery shop helped them during the pandemic, that maybe they had been unable to read, but this book helped them read again, or they felt like they were able to escape their present day and go to another time and place. That's truly heartwarming and it never gets old. 
I know, you know, I can get these messages week after week and I, I'm never not grateful for them. Yeah, I can only imagine how great that must feel, having an impact with something you have created. It's a surprising outcome of the work, <laughs> but it's a very good feeling. Yeah. And since you mentioned you also like to read a lot, like me, I have to ask you, what are your all-time favorite books? It's hard to do. It's such a difficult question because I have so many. I can think of the books that helped influence me the most. It doesn't necessarily mean they're my three all-time favorites, but they were definitely impactful. And one of them was The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, because when I read that, it felt like I was introduced to a whole new way of writing a novel, which was very refreshing and liberating. Another book was 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, because that book just blew my mind. And I loved the scope of it and the breadth of it. More recently, the Elena Ferrante Neapolitan series have really meant a lot to me because it's just been nice again for me to go to another time and place and I love that she doesn't necessarily follow the rules of contemporary American fiction. Thanks for sharing I think these are great recommendations especially the first two I've heard a lot about but I haven't read those yet and I think for this reason this is my favorite question to ask because I get a lot of recommendations. (laughs) Yeah I bet you do yeah. And for our last question, I want to ask something that I ask all my guests, that if you were to pick one interesting life experience to share with us, what would you tell us? When I was 24, I went skiing for a variety of reasons, which I won't get into. I was stranded at the top of the mountain, but I was a beginning skier and I didn't really know how to ski, but They had closed down the slopes and my instructor left with other people in our little group class and somebody was supposed to come back to get me, but no one did. And all the lifts were closed. Everything was closed. So I'm stranded at the top of this humongous mountain. It was actually in the Alps (laughs) and um, I couldn't ski and I didn't know how to get down. And then it started to become dark and everything was frozen over. So I remember I tried my way in the dark to just make my way down the mountain and I couldn't even see, I couldn't even ski. So eventually I just sat down on my bottom and I (laughs) shuffled my way down the mountain and it took about seven hours. Oh my God. (laughs) And it was freezing and it was dark and I didn't know where a cliff was or where it wasn't. And my husband was at the bottom of the mountain. By this time, they had sent a search committee. (laughs) Um, But anyway, I don't know why I'm sharing that experience. It wasn't a fun experience at all. It was actually quite frightening. Yeah, it sounds so scary. I know I'm laughing, but I'm laughing because it's so scary. (laughs) Yes, but I think the reason I'm sharing it is because when I was in the midst of it, I remember thinking, I just had this strange belief that I'm going to make it it's going to be okay. Even though every indicator, you know, showed that perhaps I wouldn't, but it, <laughs> it was one of those times where, you know, you just feel like maybe there's somebody out there watching out for you and you just relax and stop worrying and just trust that this is going to work out. So it became like a metaphor for me later in life. I love that. I love that you know, you associated it to something positive, even in such a scary moment. Yeah, I remember at the moment, think just feeling this weird sense of calm, even though I was really scared. But because again, I had that sense that this is going to be okay. So sometimes I think about that when I'm in the middle of a difficult experience. Yeah, can't can't imagine being in that position and feeling calm. So you know kudos to you (laughs) it's you know sometimes you have no choice right true (laughs) there was nothing I could do really other than just trust that somehow I might find my way yeah I guess 
but right now it's very scary to me because I yeah. also don't ski so I yeah. I can feel that like you oh, know, yeah. there's no way you can get get out of this exactly yes yeah, mm. 